Hello, welcome back. We're back once again to talk about some golf cart stuff. Look at everybody already in the room. Cool. Gene, let's see. Now, I'm sure I'll say let's see unconsciously uh, uh, 10 times today probably. Now I, now I see when I watch myself, I see myself say it all the time now. So apparently I do say that a lot. Uh, G, let's see, Ricky, what's up, Ricky? Twisted Mopar, can't wait to see what we learn. Howdy, folks, from Easy Mike. Uh, David Trend Media, Quan, hello, Tim. Quan, I'm glad you're here. I'll get back to you just a second. Uh, Kirk, I'm waiting. Uh, Terry Gage, hello, Tim, and everyone. Rock Dog, oh, Rock, what's up, man? Sorry for missing the past few. Travel and work getting away. That's all right. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for showing back up. Let me see what we got going on on Facebook before I get started. What I was going to say, Quan, is I'm going to start doing something different with the with the featured carts because the last couple of episodes, I think by the time I got around to featuring, you know, the cart, putting up the let's see and let's see some carts, the persons the they had already the, the people had already left the room. I think that happened the last two times. So. I'm going to say it, I'm going to start saying it at the beginning so you'll know whose cart it's going to be. I'm not going to show it till later, but I, w I want, you want you to make sure that you get to see your own cart is all I'm saying. Uh, so, Quan, today is your day. We're going to feature your cart today. So just letting you know. That way you, that way you won't leave the room before I get to it. I'll, I'll get to it uh, when we get through with the questions. Let's see. Twisted Mopar. I need a hat. Hey, swag links. Twisted Mopar, they're in there. Uh, are you going? Are you can take your chance on the giveaway? You know, the giveaway. That's going to be. Uh, I think my wife informed me that it has to be on Tuesday because she can't help me on a Thursday, so it has to be on a Tuesday for that. So uh, maybe next Tuesday. Maybe we'll do it this next Tuesday. We'll do the giveaway. I can't say you'll get it, but you know, that, that's when we. That's that's the plan to do it. Wonder where number two. What do you mean, Ricky? What are we talking about there? Ted Manis, hello, hello, Ted. Welcome to the room, man. I'm glad you're here. Regularly, all the viewers last Tuesday and at the end of the episode, I was the only one to give up a thumbs up like, we need to do better to keep the channel up and running. Well, thank you, Greg. Thank you for pointing that out. That's cool. Dury Andrews, I told you I was going to be live, Dury. I, I talked to him today on the phone. I, uh, uh, I, haven't, I did not get the pics yet. I, I had been busy getting ready to, to go live. I did not get any of the pics. So you sent them, to, uh, you sent them directly to me, right, because I gave you my direct email address. All right, yeah. Well, I, I just wanted to make sure, Quan, because I think the last two episodes, the person had already left before, I, before I, or the people that, I mean, we did Lauren. I don't think Lauren, that's the NV Nature girl. I don't think she was in the room and uh, when we did her cart. And I don't think uh, Candy, uh, Reggie Watson, was in the room. Reggie, are you in the room today? And uh, Lauren, are you in the room today? They make a smart charger. A 90s Western car, Ted Manis. Yeah, we, is it a, is your Western cart, Ted, is it 42 volts? Because uh, the Western, they, like they had a 42 volt cart at one time. So if it, even if it's 42 volts, we have a smart charger. Uh, Lester Summit 2, they, we have a special 42 volt only Lester Summit 2 that, the, that you could use for that car. Let's see, over on Facebook, we've got Daniel McAfee. What's up, Daniel McAfee? Thank you for uh, stopping by. Jimmy Stokely, thank you, man. Thank you for showing up. East Tennessee, raining in 68. Well, we're not getting any rain today. At least it doesn't, I haven't, I haven't checked to see if we're going to get some later. But uh, we're hotter than 68, too. Definitely, definitely warmer than 68 right now. Okay, Ted says it's a six battery, so it's not the seven battery because Western did make a seven battery uh, 42 volt 
car. So yours is just a six battery. So yeah, you can use a Lester Summit 2. I mean, that's just a normal 36 volt car, R48. Lester Summit 2 is both. It can either, it can be programmed for either 36 volt operation or 48 volt operation. So go to golfcartgarage.com and ask about the Lester Summit 2 for your car. Let's see, Twisted Mopar says storms here in central Illinois, north of St. Louis. No, that's like straight up from me. So yeah, that's a uh, good luck. I hope they don't get severe because we've had some severe stuff here in Arkansas lately. Uh, Dmax 97. Thank God I didn't miss the show today. <laughs> well, thank God you're here, Dmax. You are a very important part of this operation, and I appreciate you stopping by. Okay. Let me run the social media links before I forget. You can obviously you can follow us on Facebook and YouTube, but you can also follow us on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, we're everywhere, so I'm running those links right now. Let's see here. That is done, and we are cool. We're rolling on both platforms. Everything looks good, guys. All right, let's get started. Let's get started with the regular questions. I'm sure we'll get some more in the chat. Number one is from Samuel. I'll start with recently, my batteries are basically boiling when I charge them, okay? I've never heard this before, and the last two times also acid levels are good, voltage is good over the whole pack, and individual batteries show at least eight volts after I charge. I went on a very short ride and the battery light came on. What could this mean? It could mean, you have to understand, I, that, it, that is only one thing that's, uh, let's see, how can I say this? When you check the battery voltage and it's over 8 volts, you think everything is normal. That's only like 75% likely that it's normal. I mean, it is, it is likely that it's normal. But you can have batteries fool you with that voltage. So the fact that your battery light came on after you drove it for a short period of time, that's when I want you to take some voltage. Take voltage again on each one. See if you find one of those batteries that's drastically different than the other because that would cause that battery light to come on. You could have a battery that drops out under load very quickly that can still show eight volts, after, especially after it's being right off the charger. But it could drop out, under, it could drop out as you're driving it very quickly. I mean, that is very possible, and it's very likely what's going on with you. Number two. I purchased a 2017 Club Car Precedent last year from a customer. However, when I drive it, it feels like when I accelerate, something is holding it back. Everything I read says I need to program it for higher speed code, as it is probably set at code one. I would like to set it to code five. When I wrote a company online, they said I needed to get my speed card serial number. I cannot find anything that tells me where to find that. Do you know where that is located? <laughs> I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're asking and they've got you all confused on what the deal is. You're probably correct. Your car is probably set for, I think I've talked about this before, like when a golf, cart, golf course pro orders an entire set of golf carts for his golf course, he has them set. Now this is nowadays, you know, they used to, you couldn't do this, but nowadays he has them set for a certain amount of regenerative braking, depending on how hilly his terrain is, depending on, you know, the type of golf course we're talking about, because the type of golf courses can vary. You can have a flat golf course where all the holes are basically flat, or you can have some, you know, really hilly golf courses and you don't want your clients, you know, just freewheeling down those hills in those golf carts because they're going to wreck them and you know they, they're going to play bumper cars anyway but this would give them a if they could freewheel they could get going way too fast so he has them programmed to the point where they will not do that where they'll only go a certain amount of miles per hour so your cart very well could be programmed for a lot of regenerative braking and you're not able to freewheel down hills very good at all so what you can do is you go to club car and they have a special computer that they can plug in and they can change your, your codes. And if you want it set to code five or a lot of people call it code four or private mode, there's a lot of different versions of it. 
then you have to, they have to put a sticker in your uh, glove box that says this card is set to, to code five, and it is the code on the sticker. They'll, they'll put this sticker in your glove box and it will say code whatever, whatever it is. And that is to prove that you paid for that and because your car is going to go pretty fast, you know, at that point. So it, it's just a way they get you. They're going to charge you for the sticker. So what happens is they order the sticker or they have a desk full of them and that's what you buy. You buy the sticker, put it in your, in your glove box, and then they plug their computer in and then they set you to the code that's on the sticker. That's, that's what the deal is there that you're talking about. And yeah, it will speed your car up to, you know, a stock car up to 19.6 uh, or, or maybe, maybe it might be a little bit faster than that. Okay. But anyway, Club Car Dealer has that computer that I'm talking about. Number three. A steering sector has just one tie rod end attached to the passenger spindle. It has what appears to be a mount on the driver's side, but there's no mounting surface for the tie rod end. Is this normal setup or am I missing part of the steering? Okay, you have one tie rod end attached to the passenger spindle and you don't have, are you telling me that you don't have anything attached to your other spindle, to the driver's spindle? Because what, what, what normal is that you have in some cars, you've got a tie rod that's attached to one spindle, but then there's a drag link that goes all the way over. It's called a drag link from, from that same spindle under this, and it mounts all the way to the other spindle. That way, both tires turn at the same time, when you, even though it's only pulling on one. That's what I, I, I think that's what you're describing, because if what you describe is true, if it's literal, what you just said, then only one of your tires is going to turn when you turn the steering wheel. So there must be a drag link going to the other side. And the mounting point that you're talking about, that's probably the mounting point for a, at a golf course, they have this little device that you can add to a golf cart in the front and it enables you to back up two carts and, and connect like a train and you can pull several at one time. Like uh, the cart guys, sometimes they have to move several carts with, with only one cart guy, and he would, it would be forever if he had to move them individually. So there's these hitch things you can add to uh, golf course carts where they can pull several at one time with one golf cart. So that's, that mounting part that you're talking about is probably that. Let's see. Quan uh, says, D did you have those computers at your garage, Tim? Or only OEM has them? I, I well, well, both. O OEM has them, but I used to be OEM for a, for a short period of time. I worked for a club car, and I did have the computer. Uh, so, but, yeah, o the, the ones that are actually programmable to, to do the speed, to change it to the speed, those are, o those are going to be dealers only. Now, the, now, this is back when I used to work through this is how it was. Now, uh, there's, a, there's a residential version that you can read. You can, uh, you can read all kinds of codes. You can read fault codes, and you might be able to change the region and stuff in there, but you can't program the speed like that. So that's how it used to be. I'm not sure exactly how it is now because that was a while ago. Keith from Nashville checking in. Rainy and muggy here. That's what we just heard, Keith, up in your way. Uh, there's some storms going through. Who said that? Of, of uh, St. Louis, north of St. Louis, where were the storms? Let's see. Oh, Twisted Mopar said storm central Illinois, north of St. Louis, yeah. And you, you got some rain going on there in East Tennessee, I got you. Yeah, Jimmy Stokely on Facebook also said he's in East Tennessee, raining in 68. Number four, 36 volt easy go charger putting out 44 volts, but when connected to the batteries, voltage only shows what volts are in the batteries, 36.1. I changed all cables and no difference. Thanks, Tim, or thanks, Tim.
Well, how'd you test that 36 volt charger putting out 44 volts? How, how'd you do that? Because you can't do that without DC activation. You know, so you either had to bypass the relay on the inside. Anyway, we're getting we'll get to, we're getting too complicated there. But my point is, uh, 44 volts on, coming out of the charger. That's uh, on a 36 volt charger. That's probably normal. 40, even more. 46 volts, 48, somewhere in that area is probably what the it would be pushing if the if you were at the end of the charge cycle and the batteries were allowing the charge to go they would the batteries would eventually get up to about 44 to 48 volts in a 36 volt car so that's actually normal see the charger has to overpower the batteries the batteries are pushing out and the charger's pushing out so the charger's got to have more voltage in order to, to to fill the batteries up. It's got to have more voltage than the battery pack itself. So that's why a 36 volt charger puts out 44 to 48 volts. But it doesn't, it, as soon as you connect it to the batteries, they kind of lock heads. You know, the batteries are, are, are clashing with the charger and they're sitting there having a, a fight and the charger's supposed to win, it's supposed to push it back and start filling the batteries up with energy. So anyway, the way that you test it is you take a reading off of your battery pack before you start the charger, then plug your charger in and look at your reading. Your, your battery voltage should start rising from wherever it was at. It should start rising slowly and it will rise throughout the night all the way to about 44 to 48 volts, somewhere in that area until the charger thinks that or it decides that it is fully charged and then it should shut off. So that would be normal operation. Let's see, 2015 48 volt golf cart. Last night I charged it. This morning, put the key on the ignition, the battery meter immediately goes down, goes to 100, and then drops down to zero. The cart will not do anything. Beep when the reverse does work. If I turn the key and start moving right away, the cart will go about 100 yards and quit. Works in both forward and reverse that way. Repeat the process and get another 100 yards. I checked the surface reading on the batteries and it was 51. Thank you for your time and your consideration. That's number five. Uh, well, what, what the red flag there is that it, it goes to 100%, but then it, you said the battery gauge goes down to zero. Well, that battery gauge runs off of voltage. So it must be reading something that's low. And you're saying it was 51 volts at the beginning. Okay, what, what, what is the voltage when the cart stops at 100 yards? That's what I'd like to see, because that's when uh, it probably is, you're probably gonna find your culprit there. Number six. Two thousand twelve precedent. I replaced the controller. Independently charged each battery across the top main positive and negative. I'm only getting thirty six ish volts. What could be the problem? Well, my uh if you got four 12s, you know, you either, in, a, in a 2012 precedent, you either have four 12 volt batteries or you got six 8 volt batteries. I would go through the four 12s, take a reading off of each one. You don't have to disconnect any cables to do this. Take a voltmeter reading, handheld voltmeter reading off of each 12 volt battery and see why you're only getting 36 ish across the whole pack. You know, one of those has got to be really low uh, for you to only be getting 36 volts. And if you got six eight volt batteries, go through each one of them. Like I said, you don't have to disconnect any cables and see if you've got one of them that's, that's way lower than eight volts that's causing you to only get 36 just across the whole pack because you need to have 48 or more across the whole pack. And even 48 would be considered dead. Let's see, S. Harris, I spoke with you last Thursday. I may have gotten your email incorrect. It is zero, zero. My, my, my email is zero, zero. Uh, I did get your email. And you have to understand, when I leave Thursdays, I'm not back until uh, Monday afternoon. That, so that's, that's the delay. And when I respond to your email, which I was planning on doing today, I was going to apologize for the delay, and I was going to explain that to you. So I'm glad you're here. I will get you your wiring diagram for your, for your marathon. I will send it today. 
and I'll respond to your email today. I'm sorry for the long delay, but uh, it, that's, that's what the deal is. I'm off for a long period of time after I leave on Thursdays. Let's see. Uh, that was number six, so number seven. I have a precedent that runs eight miles an hour. Unless I turn the key off and back on, then it runs 15 next time I stop. Controller, yes, I tried new speed sensor. Okay, well, I, I can tell you what I have found. I talk to people on the phone all the time, and uh, I hear a lot of the same kind of complaints, you know, uh, on uh, people having trouble with golf cars. And I'm hearing a lot of complaints about speed sensors that were acquired from Amazon and eBay that cost like 12 bucks or something. They're, they're just, they're so cheap, you know, so inexpensive that you can't help but try it. And I've heard, I've heard some people that said it worked fine, but I've also have heard the same amount of people said that it didn't work at all. So my question would be about where are you getting your speed sensors from? You know, if they were, it's a lot of times when the cost is too inexpensive to be true, it's, it's probably not. It's, it's probably not even true. It's probably not even real, or it's just a, a faulty product, or it's just so cheap that it might not work for you, one or the other. So be careful about a lot of those real inexpensive parts on eBay and Amazon. And I was about to do number seven. No, that was it. That was number seven. All right, so I was about to do number eight. I have a 2015 Yamaha golf cart. What AC kit or motor can make it go at least 25? I have heard people say that the, the complete Navitas AC conversion kit, which comes with the motor, the controller, uh, it converts your car over to an AC system. The motor that it comes with is an AC motor. I have heard people claim numbers in that in that range and even higher with when they've converted over to that kit. So that that sh should be what you were looking at. A complete Navitas uh, DC to AC conversion. Uh, there's two different sizes you can get. One of them's a uh, it's 4KW and then a 5KW something like that I believe. But uh, the, get the big one. You know if, if you're really if you're really wanting to do upgrades in the future, get the big one. And we sell those at Golf Cart Garage, by the way. Number nine. My cart is a gas 97 carryall cart, cranked very slowly. New starter generator and battery cables. No start, also new battery. What do I look for? Well, if it, if it will actually crank, you know, if it will crank and run, you're just saying that it's turning over very slowly is what I'm, what I'm thinking is what you're saying. Then go ahead and crank it up. Uh, if you don't know how to crank it in neutral, put it in neutral and make sure that your battery is charging, you know, because, uh, just because it's a new battery, it doesn't take long when the voltage regulator is out and the, the car cranks up and it actually sucks power sometimes from the battery. So it wouldn't take long for that battery start to get to the point where it's cranking over slow. We need to make sure that your battery is charging while the car is running first. Greg says, is the convertible over your shoulder your drag car? Yes, that is. How do I get out of the way here? Yeah, that, that thing's crazy. <laughs> uh, some people used to call it my suicide machine. <laughs> Luckily, I'm still here to tell the tales. And the videos are out there, too, the, on YouTube. I'm formerly known as T-Dog, so if you ever wanted to see who I used to be, plug in T-Dog Sleeper. The cart was known as Sleeper. Uh, T-Dog Sleeper on YouTube, and you'll see videos of me at the track and that was a, a little while ago, not too, not too long, but it was, it was a few years back. But my golf cart shop was known, it was called T-Dog's Country Carts. Uh, I was known as T-Dog for a long time in a former life. Now I'm Tim from Golf Cart Garage. 
Number 10. I have a 96 club car DS electric. This car has power issues. Six 8 volt batteries. Last battery in the loop keeps draining. Replaced the battery one week ago. Still the same issue. Alright, that's, that's the title of this episode. It was based on this question. And I've, I've had this question before. I have. I've had this question before. There, some people get, they're under the impression that the position of the battery in the loop makes a difference. And it does not. It, the, the position of the battery in a series loop, that's what we're talking about. Golf cart batteries are hooked together in what is called series. That is negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive, all the way to the main negative and the main positive. You've got all the batteries hooked in between those. Your golf cart does not know that it's running off six batteries. It thinks it's only running off of one big battery. So the position in the loop makes no difference whatsoever unless there is something else connected to that battery. Unless you have some other device like a voltage regulator or something else connected to that battery, the fact that it's number six in line instead of number three makes no difference whatsoever. It's not going to change anything. So if you continuously are having a problem with the same battery, it really probably is just a coincidence, you know, that, that it's the, in the same spot or you've got a bad cable connected to it in some kind of way that's causing some issues. Uh, so, so if you replace both the cables, then it's going to make no difference. Okay. Let me check Facebook and see what's up. Anything new over there? No, it looks like we're good. Let me run social media again. Remember to follow us on YouTube and Facebook. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. That does help to keep the channel going. Like, uh, I think it was Greg said something earlier about that, and he is correct. If you would like to know anything about the uh, about the hats, you, if you know, have a lot of comments about the hats, then bam, there they are. There's my sweet hat graphic, and the links are in the description that'll take you straight to them. Just pick the color you want, take you straight to checkout if you wanted to buy one. We will be giving these away occasionally, and we will most likely give one away on this coming Tuesday if, uh, if I understood my wife correctly. It will be on Tuesday. We might be doing a giveaway, so please come back then for that and take your chance to win. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Did you hear me say it? I, that was an accident. Let's see some carts. Let's see some people's carts. Today's cart is none other than on here. It's David Tran Media, but we're talking about Quan and Missy. Y'all ready for this? You ready for this, Quan? Here we go. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice looking cart that's Quan and Missy's cart he says he sent me an email I said hello this Quan and Missy here here's our 2023 Yamaha Drive 2 Quiet Tech EFI IRS that's independent rear suspension first time cart owner I'm a huge gearhead grease monkey and have cars and motorcycles and dirt bikes and quads even jet skis I love anything with an engine so I figured I'd give golf cart a try and have fell in love with the community. Uh, and I love, and I found golf cart garage best channel for an enthusiast like us. Thank for, thank you for all you do golf cart garage crew and mostly Tim. Well, thank you, Quan and Missy. I really appreciate you. Uh, you guys are really nice to me and I appreciate your support. And so does golf cart garage. And I hope that picture does your car justice because that is cool. That is a Yamaha 2023 drive. Lift kit, he's got the exo gear sound, uh, got the side steps to get in. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is cool. That is a cool car. Uh, Kurt, we, we went over uh, the golf cart garage channel uh, went over 10,000 subscribers just recently uh, to answer your question. We went over 10,000. 
and uh, Facebook is somewhere close, and we and so we got uh, several thousand on uh, Instagram, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see here. If uh, this is the ones that that missed it with the couple of people before, that's why I said I'm going to start changing things and tell people uh, at the beginning so they'll hang around because this this is Lauren. Oh no, we must have took them out. Yeah, we must have took those out. Yeah, that is a sweet car. Missy, do you get a nosebleed riding in that car? Yeah, it is pretty high. It is pretty high. Ricky says, is there a big advantage to upgrade from my stock PowerWise charger to a newer model? There's, there's not a big advantage if your stock PowerWise charger is working correctly and your onboard computer is working correctly, it, then I wouldn't change anything. Now, if you do start, if you ever develop a problem with it, if with your stock PowerWise, then I'd go to a, you know, a newer smart charger, you know, but as long as everything's working like it's supposed to and, you're, and it's shutting off and then that, that's a good system. It charges, it charges pretty good. Uh, that's a, you must be, if you said power wise, let's see, that is, that's easy go, right? Yeah, that's going to be easy go. Quan says, thank you, Tim, for the feature. Not a problem, man. Thank you for your support. It's a sweet cart. Kurt, LOL, let's see. That's for kind words. Ricky Smith, 05 TXT. Yeah, the power wise. Okay, Ricky, the 05 TXT and the power wise, what that charger does is it, uh, it's very simple. It's like one of the most simplest designs of a charging algorithm that there is. If you plug it into your car, it boom, jumps up the amps and slowly goes, uh, starts dropping on the amp gauge throughout the night. And when it gets down close to zero, it may hang out there for a little while. Could be hang out there for 30 minutes or more. Uh, and then boom, shuts off. And it's never gonna come back on again. It's never, it's not doing a trickle charge. It's not doing anything at that point. It is off. There's nothing going into your battery pack. So you have to understand an idle battery pack has a slight discharge rate. So once that charger shuts off, it's not gonna do anything to your battery pack unless somebody comes over there and unplugs it and plugs it back in. All right, now newer, more advanced chargers, they have some fancy features to them, you know, a little bit more fancy than that. They they start out with a real high voltage rate, then they'll drop down a little bit, and then at the end they may shut off, but they but then a the timer's going, then they may come back on and do your battery pack like in a week or so. You know, they may recharge your car, or, but it's always monitoring your pack. So it never it never lets them discharge completely. But if you plugged in a power wise, easy go, and it did the full charge cycle and went all the way down. Then you left your car for three months. You're going to come back. Even though your charger's plugged in, you can come back. Your car's going to be dead. You know, so that's why I'm saying that's the big difference between the old style, like what you're talking about, and the newer fancy solid state chargers. Hit that like button. Oh, thank you, uh, Greg. Uh, let's see over here. I said it again. Did you hear me? I said, let's see over here. <laughs> Okay, on Facebook, Pam Brazil. Hey, Pam, how's it going? What should be the approximate speed of a 2006 Club Car 48 with standard transporter car? Well, if, it, if the 2006 is an IQ system, in other words, if it has a tow maintenance switch under the seat, uh, or a run tow switch lever under the seat, that means it's an IQ system, it can, it can be programmed. It can be programmed anywhere from 12 to right around 20. You know, we're only talking about eight miles an hour difference. It's not like we're talking about a whole big difference here, but it can be changed. So anywhere between 12 and 20 is would be uh, just depending on where it's programmed at, Pam. Let's see, Ricky Smith said, okay, thanks. Thank you, Ricky. Okay. Did I run the coupon? I don't think I did. Here's the coupon code. Get 5% off anything that you order at golfcartgarage.com. 
by using this coupon code TIM12 or TIM12. This code expires on July the 28th, 2023. So go to golfcartgarage.com, uh, look at your parts, put them in checkout. When you get to checkout, plug in the code TIM12. You'll get 5% off. <laughs> Did you really count them, uh, Quan? I've counted at least five, let's see, in the past 10 minutes. Nothing wrong with that. But we love you. Embrace the let's see. <laughs> I never knew I did that, so it is, it's, it's uh, funny when I catch myself doing it now. I think it was Craig that pointed that out. Now he's got me all messed up every time I say it. It was either Craig or David uh, or Dave from a golf cart garage or, or a combination of both of them. But anyway, I'll run the graphic occasionally. I'll run this graphic just to remind myself that I do say that. Okay. Mike Christensen on Facebook says, what battery monitor do you recommend on a 40 bait, 48 volt easy go TXT? I recommend, Mike, any battery monitor that actually shows the voltage. And we have them at Golf Cart Garage now. I was looking around the other day and we do sell them. We have one that has, not only does it have a bar graph, you know, which is what I, is the part that I didn't like about battery monitors is I don't like the ones that just have a bar graph only, you know. Well now we have, well now we sell one. Uh, I had it written down. Go to golfcartgarage.com and look at a uh, SKU number. You can plug this SKU number into the search bar. There's a SKU number CRG130-134, CRG-134, and then there's CRG-135. One of them's a 36 volt uh, gauge and one of them is a 48 volt gauge. But anyway, they both have a bar graph and show the number. So yeah, look at that. One says, we all notice it now. Well, I'm going to quit saying it. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, it's no big deal. At least it's not the um, um, um that most people use. Yeah, I try not to do that. Over on Facebook, we've got Dwayne Smith. What's up, Dwayne Smith? Thank you for stopping by. I have a 2001 club car. I hear a high pitch sound only when I accelerate, not when coasting. Any thoughts? Is that normal? I have heard I have heard that before and I've heard that on cars that have lasted for years and it not ever caused a problem. But then again I've heard the same model car that makes no noise whatsoever. So it is a that is a frustrating thing. Uh, some Yamahas that I've had in my shop, I've noticed some older Yamahas, their controller actually made a noise, I believe. It's almost like I could hear the a high pitch coming from the controller every time you accelerated. Sort of a magnetic field kind of generated noise you know that was kind of weird so if if you don't think it's a bearing generally a bearing is not going to make a high pitch sound like that a bearing is going to make more of a metal to metal grinding sound so i would i would say it's probably not a bearing check the uh make sure you got oil in the rear end uh make sure that, that turn your car left and right and see if it makes any difference in the noise because if it does that could help you isolate what area it's in you know because if you turn to the left or the right and the noise changes what you just did is you put more pressure on that rear tire than the other rear tire so that can help you isolate the area that you might need to start looking to isolate it it's, it's a difficult thing to do finding a noise in a golf cart like that especially Dave Stoll on Facebook says, I know it's unsafe, but can a battery operated cart be modified to achieve 40 miles an hour? Well, let me step out of the way again here, Dave Stoll. Let's see which side. Do you see that cart right there? That's a battery operated cart. And depending on the, uh, the wiring, depending on how I wire the batteries that are in it right now, it actually has 12 batteries in it, so I can either, I'll, I'll tell it real quick. That car is designed to where it can either run on 48 volts, 72 volts, or 144, all right? 
by changing some wires around, you know, by, by going from a parallel circuit to a series circuit. And right now it's wired for 48 volts. 48 volts, stock golf cart voltage is what it is, 48 volts. And it'll go 55 miles an hour. So can 40 be achieved? Yeah, 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 pretty easily. And, but that car's been as fast as 75, so it, e even more than 40 can be achieved. Yeah, good luck, Dwayne. I don't know what to tell you. That high pitch stuff is a uh, is hard to. It's, it's sometimes it can be hard to find. Let's see. We're good with let's see. Good because I just said it again. Uh, kind of like some electric cars. The sound they make, it's like an electric sound, right? Yeah. RXB have a high pitched tone and every time the controller is turned on. That, that's what I was talking about, Rock Dog. I've, I've had some Yamahas where I've, I really felt like the noise was coming from the controller itself. It's like a, you know, that's what I was saying, uh, kind of like a magnetic field kind of noise like a Tesla coil or something, you know, because a lot of that stuff is what is really what's going on. You got all kinds of magnetic field going on. As soon as you hit that accelerator pedal you know, inside that motor and everything. That, and it can interfere with like, uh, it can also interfere with your electronics like stereos and stuff. You know, the, the, if you get, if you mount certain wires too close to the magnetic field, you know, it can cause wreak havoc in your stereo sound. Yeah, electric motors do make noise for sure, but it's amazing how quiet some golf carts are, even, you know, electric golf carts. It's amazing how quiet they can be. And then you'll, got, you'll find another one that's the same model and it will have kind of a, a, a whine to it or a, or a high pitched noise. So that's, that's what we were talking about, I think. I mean, it's a, they, they could be really silent. I mean, this one, I rebuilt the rear end in this one uh, when I put the six to ones in it. It's got six to one gears in it. And when I put those in there, I rebuilt, I changed every bearing in there, uh, every seal in there, and that rear end is really, really quiet. I mean, brand new gears, you know, it's seals and bearings, and it's really quiet. Almost, almost no sound whatsoever in it. So I was very happy about that one. That one went together. It, w it, won't, it won't pull a wheelie. It will spin out, but it won't pull a wheelie. Yeah. I mean, you, if you go to the videos at, at the track, you'll see it'll, it'll burn out at the start. Uh, go to YouTube and look at T-Dog Sleeper, and you'll see that it will spin out, but it, it will not raise the front end. Uh, the, the tires slip before, uh, before it raises the front end. I've got some, I actually have, that's just the tires I put on the rear just to roll it around in my shop. I actually have Mickey Thompson's, believe it or not. I've got Mickey Thompson uh, tires on some really, really light uh, rims that I put on the back when I would go to the track. But the Mickey Thompson tires, I don't know if you're familiar with them, they're, they're, uh, they're Mickey Thompson's for a junior dragster. And they're so light, they're so light, they're like feather light because they're really, really thin. So in other words, they don't really hold air very well either. So you're constantly having to monitor them and make sure that the air pressure is right. Because if just sitting in my shop for a week they'd be you know they'd be flat you know sitting here they're, they're so thin uh let's see kevin wheeler can't send a chat what do you mean kevin have you thought about a roll bar yep yeah, i did kurt for a while and my wife you know we had discussions about that for a while you know at the track and i decided that uh, if I'm going to flip, if something's going to go drastically wrong, I decided I think I'd rather be thrown free. I don't want, I'd rather not tumble, I, you know, inside a cage. You know, I, I think I'd rather be thrown free and take my chances that way. So I never did the roll bar. Plus, that would cause it to not look as much like a golf cart it does. And the fact that it was nicknamed the sleeper, I kind of decided to leave it alone. It, just because it, that's, that's what made it gain attention is because it was, looked like a normal golf cart. I, oh, I've seen some that pull wheelies too, uh, Quan. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some that pull wheelies, but this one... I don't know if it's a combination of uh, 
a combination of where I sit, you know, it, the, you know, where, where the weight is. And I actually do try to lean forward a little bit just in case, because when it's on 72 volts, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty hard off the line on 72. 48 volts is manageable, but will still spin out on 48 volts. 72 volts, it comes out pretty hard. And uh, I, there is a possibility of wheeling on that, of wheeling on 72. On 144, you have to understand that you're, you're losing amp hours when you, well, I tell you what, one day we'll do a whole show on uh, how amp hours uh, can change your 60 foot time at the, at the drag strip because it's all, of, that's what it is, all about, it's all about your 60 foot time. If you get a good 60 foot time, your, your ending time is gonna be nice. But that's a whole, that's a whole different form of, of uh, specialty golf cart stuff, you know, that we'll get into one day. Dwayne Smith says, thanks. Let's see. Uh, David Dale stole just the, one of the main things to achieve high speed, if you're talking about just flat ground, is high speed gears. I mean, just you can just get high speed gears and speed yourself up. Ricky Smith said that'd be very interesting. Yeah, that's that's a whole different world, uh, Ricky. When you get when you start doing that, and I used to really be into that. I had a real good time. My golf cart shop. T Dogs Country Carts basically existed to fund my racing habit. I mean, that base. I mean, that's it's really expensive stuff, and it basically existed just to fund that hobby. You know. All right, guys. I believe that is it. The title of this was Battery Position in a Series Circuit. We've done the social media. We've done the coupon. We featured Quan's cart. Bam! There it is again. And we answered some questions. And I hope we were able to help some people out today. So thank everybody for coming. I will see everybody on uh, Tuesday. And maybe we'll do a hat giveaway. I have to talk to my wife and see if she's going to be able to help me. Because uh, she has to run that generator thing. Got to do what you have to do to fund what we love. We know, we know that too well. Yep, that's exactly right. So on the sleeper. It would be cool to hear about the 1200 amp controller. How did you know that? Did I tell you that, Rock Dog? Let me see. It's a, actually 1850 uh, Rock Dog, 1850 amp controller. Let's see, my gas powered, this is a Kevin Wheeler. My gas powered 2001 carry off club car, when it first started, the car wouldn't go into gear until you rev it up. Then it grabs real hard. 2001 carry-off club car, when I first started it, cart wouldn't go into gear until you rev it up. Then it grabs real hard. Uh, well, you got something, you got something out of adjustment there, but it makes that would be normal if you revved it up and then put it in gear and then it would go real hard. I mean, that's for sure. That would be normal. But not being able to put it into gear until you rev it up, that's not normal there. What I would be looking at your, I'd go in the back, like uh, it's a carry-all, so I'm assuming that you have like one of the beds that lift up and you can access the engine and transaxle uh, since it's a carry-all. I would be opening all that up and getting that out of your way and then cranking it in See if you can crank it in neutral, make sure your clutches are, are, op are operating properly, but then kill it and then try to put it in gear and you'll see how your shift cable runs to this arm on top of the transaxle, okay? Take, try to put it in gear with your hand there, not at, the shift, not at the shifter knob, but right there on top of the transaxle where the shifter linkage connects to that arm. Grab that arm and see if you can force it in and put it into gear right there. If you can't, then you might have something wrong in your rear end because, uh, you know, it, it's all it is is that that shifter linkage goes all the way back to that arm on top of the transaxle, which goes into gear and then goes into reverse or neutral, one or the other. The 
just a clutch issue. Okay, well, is this a key start car or a pedal start car? You know what I mean? Because uh, uh, sometimes I've had carry-alls before, or the bigger ones, where it was actually a key start and, it would, and the car would idle. The ones that idle do have to have a different clutch. Key start, okay. Well, those, those do have a different clutch than the, than the pedal start cars because the clutch needs to hold apart so the car can idle and not grab the belt. Can you look at the pick for the OBC? I'll order a charger if you think I need one. I will, I will, Derek. Uh, I can't do that right now, but I've got your information right here from when I talked to you earlier. I tell you what, I'll call you here in a minute, uh, Derry. I'll call you back after I've used, once I get off the air here, I'll look at the pick and then I'll call you back. All right, guys, that's going to be it. I will see everybody later. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Let me check Facebook, see if I'm missing anything. No, we're good there. Okay. Yep, that's it. I'll see everybody on Tuesday. Hopefully, we'll be giving away uh, uh, we'll be giving away a swag bag. And remember, link in the description if you would like to speak with me to set up an appointment. Link in the description for that too. Take you to the scheduling page, and I'll call you at whatever time you pick out. See y'all later. The garage is now closed.